Today we'll be discussing a recently published paper titled The Effect of Relative Encoding on Memory-Based Judgment by Marissa Sharif and Daniel Oppenheimer. Now, the authors start off by discussing how research has shown that we are bad at identifying or at estimating the absolute magnitude or total quantity of a stimulus, but we are good at discriminating stimuli from one another. For example, it is very difficult for people to accurately identify the number of dots within a given pattern, but we are very good at figuring out which pattern has more dots. For instance, if I present you with this image and ask you to tell me how many dots were in pattern B, you may not be able to do this very fast. However, if I present you with the same figure and ask you to quickly tell me which pattern has more dots, you may be able to do so very quickly and be able to identify pattern B as having more dots than pattern A. Now, related to this point, other researchers have shown that when assessing the stimulus, people represent where in the distribution that stimulus lies rather than the absolute value of that stimulus by making either ordinal judgments or interval judgments. Now, an ordinal judgment suggests that people can determine which stimulus is better, but not by how much, while an interval judgment suggests that people can determine how much stimuli differ from one another in relative terms, but not in relation to absolute standards. Essentially, what this is saying is that people's evaluations are heavily influenced by surrounding stimuli. Now, to further demonstrate that people's evaluations are heavily influenced by surrounding stimuli, we can look at a commonly used circle illusion within psychology. Now, despite the orange circles being the exact same size, the circle on the right looks much larger than the circle on the left. This is because we tend to judge the circles as being smaller when they are surrounded by larger circles. Now, the takeaway from this illusion is that our judgments are often informed by relative information, such as their surrounding circles, rather than absolute standards, such as the actual size of the orange circles. Now, although our judgments are often informed by relative rather than absolute information, there are times in which we must make a decision without the help of readily available information. Put simply, it is not uncommon for our judgments to rely on memories of past information. Now, prior research has shown that when we rely on our memories to help us with a given decision, we rely on our initial impressions of past evaluations. Now, this tends to be more efficient than recalling the details of that prior evaluation and then reevaluating all of our options. Now, if our judgments are relative rather than absolute, and if we rely on our initial impressions of stimuli, then do our evaluation of prior stimulus change after we acquire new relevant information? Now, the authors discuss a relevant example in which there is a college student who eats mainly dorm food. However, the student is able to occasionally go out to eat at a local pub, and compared to the dorm food, the pub is among the best food the student has ever had. Eventually, the student graduates and is exposed to a variety of new sources that are much better than the original pub food. And given the exposure to new, better food sources, how would the student recall the quality of the pub food? Well, to try and answer this question, the authors of this paper conducted a series of studies. In the first study, participants listened to several song clips at two different times and made evaluations about who they thought was the best singer and who they thought was the worst singer. In the study, the researchers had two very bad singers, three average singers, and two very good singers. Now, participants were randomly assigned to one of two conditions. In the first condition, which the researchers called T1 top, the participants listened to two bad singers, and then they listened to an average singer. In the second condition, which the researchers called T1 bottom, the, the participants listened to two good singers, and then they listened to an average singer. Now, the reason for doing this was to make the average singer look relatively good or bad by comparison. Now, after listening to these individuals, the participants then completed a distractor task 
and were then asked to listen to two more average singers and were then told to select one singer as the winner and one singer to be eliminated. Now, as you can see in this graph, when the average singer was paired with the bad singer, as in the T1 top condition, the average singer was frequently selected to be the winner. However, when the average singer was paired with a good singer, such as the T1 bottom condition, the average singer was frequently selected for elimination. Now, essentially, the results from this study demonstrate that the evaluation of the average singer depended on his or her relative comparison to either the very good or the very bad singer, and our relative evaluations of a given stimuli do not change even after we are presented with new relative information, such as the presence of a new average singer. Now, in the second study, the researchers had participants watch toy cars race along the track at two different times, and then make evaluations about which car they thought was the fastest. Now, in this study, the researchers had three different toy cars consisting of a slower red car, a faster yellow car, and a moderate speed black car, which the authors called the target car. Now, similar to the first study, the participants were randomly assigned to one of two conditions in which they either saw the moderate car race the slower car, which again they called the T1 top condition, or they saw the moderate race car race the faster car, which was the T1 bottom condition. Again, the reason for doing this was to make the moderate car look relatively fast when racing the slow car, or relatively slow when racing the fast car. Now, after watching the two cars race, the participants then completed a distracted task and were then asked to watch a final car race along the track. Now, although they were told that the final car was a different car, it was actually the same moderate speed car as before, and the researchers considered it to be a decoy car. Now, participants were then asked to rank the three cars that they viewed according to their speed. Now, as you can see in this graph for the second study, when the moderate speed car was paired with the slower car in the T1 top condition, the participants rated it as being the fastest. However, when the moderate speed car was paired with the faster car, as in the T1 bottom condition, it was rated as being the slowest. Again, these results demonstrate that our evaluation of a given stimuli, such as the speed of a toy car, is dependent on earlier evaluations. Now, in their third and final study, the authors had participants record the number of butterflies that landed on certain flowers. Now, these butterflies and flowers were not real, but instead were aspects of a computer program. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go over the specific details of this study, but I should point out that the results for study 3 were essentially the same as the results from studies 1 and 2, such that participants tended to rely on their memory to make relative judgments. Across the three separate experiments, people encoded information relative to context at time 1. For example, the average singer was presented alongside either a very good or a very bad singer at time 1, or a moderately fast car was presented alongside either a slow or fast car at time 1. And across all three studies, the authors found that the participants would not update their decisions or their evaluations after being presented with new information. Specifically, the average singers were seen as being the best when initially compared to a bad singer, but were seen as the worst when initially compared to a good singer, despite being presented with additional average singer. And the moderately fast car was seen as the fastest when initially compared to the slower car, but was seen as the slowest when initially compared to the fast car, despite being presented with the same moderate fast car later. Now, in sum, when making memory-based judgments, we tend to rely on the context in which the original stimuli was encoded. Furthermore, it is important that we are aware of this bias because our initial evaluations may bias how we encode later information. Now, given that many of our judgments are based on memory, additional research is needed to understand how and why people make biased judgments and decisions.